What's up guys, welcome to the pixellab.net. Today I have a follow-up tutorial on the last one about uh, kind of the displacing the sphere with music. Um, so I found this website, uh, it's called renderking.it, it's an Italian website, so I have no idea what he's talking about half the time. Uh, but he wrote me and said that he actually has a preset for making this, uh, this espresso rig a little bit easier. So I, I checked it out, um, I'll put a link here and you can download it right here. Um, he's got a little example video, which is really cool, so let's take a look. So you can see that um, he's got a really cool setup here, and he actually has a full-on 25-minute tutorial on exactly how he created this guy. Um, so go ahead and watch that. Like I said, it's in Italian, so who knows what he's talking about. Uh, but I watched the whole thing and I learned some really cool tips. So I'm going to share a couple of things really quick with you. Um, let's go ahead and um, show you this sound controller. here. You put this guy in your library and if you open it up, you'll see that we have a control over here with bass, mid, and treble. And if we go ahead and open up the Expresso, you can see that it's uh, pretty intense here. And basically what he's doing is taking a sound file and breaking it down into bass, mids, and treble. And this preset helps with a lot of different things. So let's go ahead and show you a couple things you can do with it. First off, let's go to our sound file and load a track here. We'll load the same one as I used last time. All right, and then we'll go ahead and add a sphere. Go ahead and kick up the uh, segments a little bit, maybe change it to a casahedron. And then we'll go ahead and put it in our displacer. Actually put the displacer in the sphere. And just like last time, let's go ahead and add a noise shader. And uh, one cool thing that he showed in his tutorial is fall off. And this is a, another really good reason not to use a material, but to use the displacer with the noise because you can use fall off. And if we set this to something like a uh, sphere, go ahead and uh, pull it up a little bit. You can see that we're displacing just what's in this area, right? Let's go ahead and kick up our height just a little bit. So maybe put a few more segments. All right, so just right there, it's pretty cool in itself. Um, you can go ahead and move the, uh, the displacer. Um, there's some cool parameters in here. If you go under direction and change that to planar, and then if we go to uh, plus Y, you can see that we're getting it kind of pointing in one direction, which is pretty sweet. All right, so let's talk about the sound controller and what we can do with it. So in our displacer, let's go ahead and right click Cinema 40 Tags Espresso, and we'll make kind of a brand new espresso rig. And we're gonna just drag this entire sound controller into here. So all we need to do now is add a Espresso Calculate Range Mapper. And then we're gonna have to go ahead and drag our displacer into here. And on displacer, we want to do the height, right? So on the sound controller, we have some options because of the way he set it up. On the bottom is user data. So we can use bass, mid, or treble. Let's go ahead and add bass and go string it through our range mapper and to our height. And like before, if we click on our range mapper, we can go ahead and change some of the parameters. So we'll kind of bump it up a little bit. So if we click on our sound controller while we're previewing this, it'll give us our little heads up display here. We can see that the bass is going and the bass is affecting the noise. If we hit uh, command and click and drag down on a range mapper, it'll make a new one. Go ahead and do that with our displacer too. Let's go to uh, coordinates and uh, global position and then do position on the Y. And then we'll string, actually let's go ahead and add one for the mid. And then we'll string our mids through the secondary range mapper into our global position. And we can delete the height. Now let's go ahead and check this out. So now you can see that the position of our displacer is actually moving up and down with the mids, which is really cool. So we can go ahead and tweak that a little bit with our range mapper. Go ahead and uh, tweak some of these parameters. And then also in the beginning of our animation, it looks like it kind of falls down to the bottom. We can offset our fall off uh, so that it kind of starts up a little higher in our offset. There we go. So probably a little bit too high, but you get the point. All right, so let me show you one other thing that's really cool. Uh, let's go ahead and make a new material, and let's go ahead and turn on luminance. We'll make this kind of a cool blue color. We'll dump that on here, and this is one of my favorite tricks. 
Um, so if we go ahead and do our range mapper again, let's put our base to the range mapper. And then for this one, we're gonna go ahead and use the texture that we just created. Now, here's a note. If we drag the texture from over here and put it in here, we're gonna have uh, different properties and we're not gonna have the ones that we want. So we have to drag it from over here and drag it in and then we're actually gonna have the correct uh, properties of the material. So we want to uh, change the luminance. So we'll go to the luminance, luminance brightness and we'll hook these two bad boys up together. Now let's check it out. You can see that uh, it's a little bit too strong, so let's go to our range mapper. On luminance, um, we definitely need this a lot lower, so maybe we could put this at five or so. Now let's go ahead and preview that guy. So you can see that the base is affecting the luminance and you get some really, really cool effects with this guy. All right, so that's basically the sound controller. There are a bunch of other features in here you can play around with. They have a switch that you can animate on and off, a bass switch, so you can turn off the bass, you can turn off the mids or the trebles. Um, there's a bunch of other features in here that you can hook up through Expresso. So I hope that gives you a few other tips on how you can use this effect. Make sure to check out Alessandro's uh, website if you speak Italian. That would uh, be very helpful. Otherwise, hopefully you can glean some cool tips out of here. Thanks for watching the tutorial, and we'll talk again soon. Bye, everybody.